Oh my god. What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sound Attack once again, and welcome back to the channel. Glad to have you here. Today, we're going to be talking about the RTX 2070. Specifically, this is the EVGA, what is it? XC, I believe. That's interesting. That being said, we're going to be doing a review of it with a twist. That twist today is going to be that we're going to be looking at the Linux native gaming benchmarks, meaning we're not going to be messing with Proton or anything at this point, but I noticed that that was a hole in a lot of benchmarks that people are posting up on the internet, especially in the YouTube tech sphere, so I was looking for like that hole to fill. So. I've been doing a lot of work trying to put a lot of research into how to do this and so on and so forth and it's actually a little bit more difficult than you might think. So to start things off we're going to just be using built in benchmark titles and we'll be going through these titles here in just a sec. To start things off though let's talk about the test bench and you guys can let me know what you think of the test bench down in the comment section below. We have an MSI B350 Tomahawk motherboard with the Ryzen 7 2700 clocked at 4 gigahertz. And while I do realize that of course the most frames at things like 1080p and even 1440p with some of the newer GPUs or the newest most powerful GPUs can be bottlenecked compared to like an 8700K and so on, I think it's a more realistic uh, benchmark to be running especially if you're going to be running you know Linux so I think that it's going to work out quite well just fine we do have the Noctua NHD 15 on there it's a great cooler and allowed us to overclock to 4 gigahertz with no problem to pair it off we do have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 clocked at 3200 megahertz so nice fast memory there and a 256 gigabyte SSD that will rotate the games in and out with onto if needed for better performance from a two terabyte hard drive. It's a Seagate 7200 RPM. It's all powered with a Corsair CX750M and we are actually running Ubuntu 18.04. Now, of course, down in the comments, let me know your favorite distro, and I realize that when we start delving into this, there are going to be uh, tons of comments regarding what distro is the best, best for gaming, best for whatever, and I will, you know, have those com those comments and questions, or I guess conversations with you guys. However, Ubuntu being the most widely adopted at this point, especially for a desktop environment, made me lean towards it as ju just it's going to be something that we can have an easier baseline for, for everybody to compare to. I believe that pretty much anybody else that's running a different distro, you might have some more experience in Linux and so on, and I think you'll be able to kind of see the different differences uh, between your distro and say Ubuntu uh, just fine when it comes to gaming because for the most part those ports are be done by the same companies like Feral and so on and so forth. Now for this particular card we're actually running the latest PPA from Nvidia for which is number 415 as of recording this video there may be something newer that's improved of course and so on. Now that also being said, I don't have anything crazy like the RTX cores running on this at all, but so you have the numbers for the current uh, Linux performance, let's hop into that. Now to give you guys an idea on clocks and temperatures, I'm happy to report that this card is running fantastically cool. We're only hitting about 63 degrees Celsius in the superposition benchmark, which you can use on Linux, is Linux compatible. However, it's only OpenGL, so there's no Vulkan support yet for it, even though they have mentioned that they were supposed to do it by the end of 2018. And uh... Yeah, I don't think that's happening. It's the 20th of December, so I think that's getting pushed out a little bit further. That being said, we ran it at 4K optimized OpenGL for 20 minutes and the max temperature in an ambient room temperature of 75 degrees Fahrenheit. We only saw a max temperature of 63 degrees Celsius, um, which because of the thickness of the card is... is, is um, not as impressive as it sounds, right? Because you're talking about now as opposed to taking up two slots, you're taking two and a half slots, effectively three slots with this particular model. And on boards even like the MSI B350, you end up blocking two of your SATA ports completely because they're not side 
their 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 top up and down vertical i don't know that being said just keep that in mind if you pick up one of these cards the msi b350 was obviously intended uh, previously for dual slot cards not two and a half to three slot cards and that is probably one of the biggest notes about this GPU that I've come to find. It is powered by one PCIe 8 pin and one PCIe 6 pin. So that is the power that you're going to need uh, to get this card up and running in your system. And of course, like I mentioned, the larger size of it. And then if we go around the back, it's going to have all the standard ports, except you're not going to have any DVI anymore. That's been pulled out uh, for quite some time at this point in allotted graphics cards. However, NVIDIA was keeping them around and even EVGA on their For the Win 3 for the 1080 Ti did have a DVI port. So it's of note, you're just going to be having your basic HDMI 2.0, uh, the latest version, I think 2.0B at this point, and then you're going to have the latest version of the DisplayPort at 1.4. So that wraps up your input and output. Like I mentioned, the cooler is larger. However, as far as fans go and length, length isn't much longer than uh, any standard aftermarket cooler that you're gonna see on this card. Meaning essentially that you're not gonna have a card that's any longer than a reference style RTX cooler like this one right here. So here you go. Let's, we'll get measurements and I'll put them up for you guys. Now the cooling performance, like I mentioned, was great and that allowed the card to boost up to 1920 megahertz, which for an RTX 2070 is quite good as the Zotac model I had in the pre-built was only hitting about 1840 megahertz. So the performance for this particular model is quite good. The memory is at 7000 megahertz and let's hop into the benchmark. Starting things off, we have Rise of the Tomb Raider. We did 4K, 1440p, and 1080p in most titles that we could get running there. Now, for whatever reason, some of these titles would not show an option for 1440p, and we'll come across those when we get to them. But in Rise of the Tomb Raider, no Shadow of the Tomb Raider support yet on Linux, but we'll definitely bench it when it comes out there. 4K high preset had a min of 27 with an average of 55 and a max of 103. With the 1440p high re preset, it had a minimum of 43 with an average of 103 and a max of 177. At the 1080p high preset, I think this is where we start seeing a, a little bit of an issue, of course, with the Ryzen 7 2700, and I'm gonna try to validate these this a little bit more. Usually I'll do these base benchmarks and then we'll come back in and I do it all live over on twitch.tv slash underscore if you want to come give me some helpful tips. But on 1080p high preset, we did see the min drop to 40 FPS while the average went up to 135 and the max went way up to 287. So we're definitely seeing some throttling there and because of the lack of my experience with Linux and overlays and so on, it's hard for me to get real-time uh, real time reports on what's going on with the GPU clock, but this just screams to me that at 1080p we were having some CPU throttling going on, or GPU throttling due to the CPU. Next we had Dirt Rally 4K Ultra Preset. It ran beautifully and I didn't bother to go to 1440p or 1080p because with the ultra preset at 4k we saw mins of 71 with an average of 86 and a max of 106 you're going to get great performance here i'm just going to base all the rest of my testing on these latest cards in linux off of this and i think we'll be fine at 4k especially with an older title like this now middle earth shadow of mordor at 4k is uh actually an interesting story so all resolutions had a 37 fps min on initial testing with the 4k preset at high and so i dove into this one we probably spent about two hours testing every individual setting until we found out that at least on linux at this point the mesh quality uh, pretty much will just tank that that built-in benchmark to hit 37 fps no matter what else is turned on and so if you turn everything else to low and you have the high preset 
uh, the left for the setting for mesh quality, you're going to hit 37 FPS at 1080p, 4K, and 1440p. So to resolve this, we turned mesh quality all the way to low and left the rest of the presets uh, to high alone. And with that, we did get some really good performance at 4K and we saw a low of 49 fps with a average of 68 and a max of 87. i was pretty happy with that especially with an rtx 2070 at this point especially on linux i think that's fantastic performance now deus ex mankind divided was one that i mentioned earlier that didn't have 1440p resolution options in the game menu and I couldn't really get it to work, even forcing the uh, desktop to 1440p. Not sure exactly what's going on there. I think that's something to do with its, its port and whatever happened there. That being said, 4K high preset had mins of 24 with average of 32 and a max of 39. While at 1080p high preset, we had mins of 46 with an average of 63 and a max of 92. The last built-in benchmark that we went ahead and did was going to be the Bioshock Infinite 4K Ultra benchmark. And with this, we saw 10 FPS on the min, which was pretty disappointing. But I haven't really figured out how to fully read that file, and that's a bottom-out min. So take this with a huge asterisk. And I would actually, while typically I recommend looking at the mins, this min is not indicative of the overall uh, performance and it had just pretty much one stutter that dropped this down to 10 frames per second, but it's of note. Now we did have an average of 59 frames per second and a max of 220. Finally, at 1080p on Ultra, we had min of 30, so bottom floor like hard min of 30 FPS is pretty respectable and an average of 132 with a max of 295. I was really excited to test Bioshock Infinite on Linux because that was one of the biggest titles of recent history. They, they had pretty good uh, Linux support and I'm happy to see this performing well as well on the RTX 2070. Now we did test Superposition, but like I said, we didn't have the option for anything but OpenGL. So the Vulkan performance is locked out at this point. And we did the 4K uh, preset, essentially 4K optimized and I'll throw the scores up for you. The interesting thing about this is it was very, very close to the 8700K paired with an RTX 2070 as well on Windows running DirectX 12. So if we can get them to go ahead and get a support for Vulkan, I think you would see those two trading blows, especially considering that we were within 100 points on a 2700 with an RTX 2070 versus an, uh, an 8700K, which as you guys know, does now, allow to push uh, quite a bit more frames. Maybe not as much, of course, in superposition where you do see that, that 4K optimize being quite a bit more GPU bound as it should be, especially since it is one of the latest, well, it's not one of the latest, it is the latest tool to benchmark and stress test a GPU with. And I, I love superposition. I just think they need to get us uh, some Vulcan support uh, stat stat i hope you guys enjoyed this uh, twist on the review of the evga rtx 2070 xc edition if you did be sure to leave a like and let me know in the comment section below if you want to see more of these definitely uh, encourage me to do them we have lots of graphics cards i am happy to start doing this with the 2080 and other gpus that will be coming down the pipeline i still don't have a 2080 ti and i don't know if i'll ever get one it's just the way it is it's just the way it is damn demonetized see you next tuesday